Greetings and salutations, everyone. My name is Andrew Kirkoff, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Week 10 tight end and quarterback rankings for the 2023 fantasy football season. Over the course of today's episode, I'm covering all topics related to those two positions, beginning with matchups, talking about which defenses thus far this season, on average, are allowing the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends and quarterbacks so that we can identify the most advantageous matchups going into Week 10. After which, I'll go ahead and cover my top 16 tight end and quarterback rankings, sharing with you guys my thought process and opinions on each individual player while also going ahead and presenting statistics in order to justify these overall rankings. If you're looking for a specific player, there are timestamps down in the description of the video. While you're down there, be sure to go ahead, subscribe to the channel. If you have not yet already, we're making daily fantasy football content for the entirety of the 2023 season. And if you enjoyed today's content, be sure to click the like button. It's greatly appreciated. Okay, let's begin by talking about matchups at the tight end position. As you guys can see to the right side of the screen, we have the Houston Texans at the very top in terms of allowing the most fantasy points per game on average, 12.99, to opposing tight ends thus far this season on average. Again, these statistics are found based on tight end receiving statistics, that is receptions, receiving yards, and of course, receiving touchdowns in a half PPR scoring format, meeting everyone in the middle, whether you do play in a standard league or a full PPR league. We want to take advantage of these matchups. Of course, K. Dotton had a huge week there, but we're not really going to fire up any Cincinnati Bengals tight ends unless we're in a desperate position. The Cincinnati Bengals defense, they've given up a fair share of points of course they'll have their hands full this week with a guy like Dalton Schultz coming off a fantastic performance himself the Denver Broncos of course they've given up their fair share of points mainly because they've taken on Travis Kelsey in two out of the last three games that they have played of course Dalton Kincaid should have himself a fantastic performance there all in all these are the most advantageous matchups going into the given week on the other end of this conversation we have some of the more disadvantageous matchups guys like the Cleveland Browns Baltimore Ravens we have two stud tight ends Mark Andrews David and Jokey they'll be taking on each other this week I'll still talk about them over the course of today's episode episode because they're both ranked and give you guys a little bit of an indication as to why I still trust them despite the overall difficulty of said matchup. Either way, let's go ahead and let's transition to talking about my top 16 tight end rankings. For those of you who are trying to stay up to date on my latest rankings, because again, rankings are always subject to change between now and Sunday morning's live stream that starts at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll be live streaming for four hours straight this upcoming Sunday morning. There is going to be rankings that will absolutely be changed, whether it's injury information and or potential metrics that I find that give me more confidence. So if you guys are trying to stay up to date, be sure to travel down to the description of the video and check out Underdog Fantasy at this current moment in time. If you sign up using code Andrew and make a first time deposit minimum of $10, not only are you going to get the first time deposit match up to $100, but you'll get my ranking sent to you from my email directly to yours every single Sunday morning for the remainder of the season. These rankings are by position, by tier, flex rankings, half PPR, full PPR, all encompassing rankings. So if in fact, you are eligible based on the map and your current location on the right side of the screen. Be sure to take advantage of the opportunity. Help me help you. And of course, take advantage of Bryce Young 0.5 total yards in tonight's game. Put together a pick em slip at the end of today's video. I'll be putting together a couple pick em slips for tonight's game. Be sure to stick on around for that. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk about the tight end position. Of course, the Kelsey tier remains empty as Kelsey is on bye week. But we'll go ahead and we'll begin with our number one, Sam Laporta of the Detroit Lions. He is coming off a bye week himself. He's played extremely well. For a rookie tight end. He is one of the more advantageous matchups going into the given week. In fact, the seventh best matchup. The Los Angeles Chargers have given up 11.71 fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. Most recently, of course, we just saw on Monday Night Football, the tight ends of the New York Jets, nine catches for 84. Chicago Bears tight ends, 11 catches for 87. Kansas City tight ends, 14 catches, 194 in a touchdown. Even Minnesota Vikings tight ends, 10 catches, 82 in a touchdown. Titans have dominated against the Los Angeles Chargers over the entirety of this season. Therefore, the expectation is that Sam Laporta should be another one to join this group of great performances. Thus far this season, he is garnering a 24% target rate. That's targets per route run. In terms of yards per route run, amongst all tight ends in the National Football League with a base minimum of 40 targets, he's fifth in the overall list. He's playing incredibly well for a rookie. Our number two is Mark Andrews. Again, like I mentioned moments ago, Yes, he is going up against a very difficult matchup in the Cleveland Browns. Just put this into perspective. Mark Andrews, yes, thus far this season, has six touchdowns in the last eight games. And the last time he took on the Cleveland Browns, was able to have a two-touchdown game, 22.5 fantasy points throughout that overall performance. He had five targets, five receptions, 80 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns. If you go ahead and look at the other performances from other tight ends that have taken on the Cleveland Browns thus far this season, they have all combined for only 75 receiving yards. 
throughout the entire season. Mark Andrews literally has more receiving yards in one singular game than all other tight ends that have faced against the Cleveland Browns thus far this season as a total. Just wanted to go ahead and put that in perspective. If anybody's going to find success in a difficult matchup, of course, it is going to be Mark Andrews. Moving on to our number three, we have Dalton Kincaid. Kincaid has been absolutely special. In the absence of Dawson Knox, in the last three games, 11 plus fantasy points and a half PPR, he's been able to garner a 22% target share and ha now has an opportunity of taking on the Broncos defense, that is the third best matchup at the position, allowing 12 and a half fantasy points per game and a half PPR scoring format. Like I mentioned moments ago, they've taken on the Kansas City Chiefs in two of, out of the last three games that they have played. So they've given up eight catches for 83 and 11 catches for 138. But even prior to that, the New York Jets tight end, seven catches for 81. Chicago tight ends, 10 catches, 111, two touchdowns. Washington tight end, seven catches, 89 and a touchdown. Dalton Kincaid has absolutely been on a streak and he's not slowing it down going into week 10. Moving on to our number four, we have TJ Hawkinson. Even with the quarterback switch last week with Joshua Dobbs coming into the game after Jaron Hall obviously had his concussion, TJ Hawkinson garnered so much opportunity in terms of targets. He had 11 targets from Josh Dobbs, which was a 37% target share within last Sunday's game. That is a ridiculous number. In 13 of the last 14 games, we have seen TJ Hawkinson garner eight plus targets minimum. Therefore, the expectation now that Joshua Dobb actually knows the playbook, TJ Hawkinson has an even higher potential ceiling. And considering Cole Komet is coming off of a performance of over 20 fantasy points against the New Orleans Saints, I'm thinking, why not a guy like TJ Hawkinson to follow up on a performance like that? Moving on to our number five, we have Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz, I mean, my goodness, in four of the last five games, he has had a receiving touchdown. I mean, he is dominating on a consistent basis. He's taken on the second easiest matchup of the position against the Cincinnati Bengals. Of course, 81 receiving yards and 10 catches to Kincaid. Nine catches for 149 to George Kittle. We've seen Arizona tight ends, 49 and a touchdown. Tennessee Titans, 45 and a touchdown. Tyler Higby went for 71 yards. That was the best game of his season. Mark Andrews, 45 and a touchdown. Tight ends all season long have been able to find themselves advantages against the Cincinnati Bengals defense. My expectation is another big week here in a pass-happy offense for Dalton Schultz. Moving on to the final option and our thumbnail of today's episode. Again, all of these players, yes, in the A tier because they're all capable of potentially having an upside performance and claiming that number one spot. But Taysom Hill goes ahead and close out the A tier primarily because... He has just been on a hot streak. He's been able to score five touchdowns in the last three games. Last week had himself a receiving touchdown and a passing touchdown, all while he's been able to get himself, what, 11 rushing attempts for 52 rushing yards last week, 20 rushing attempts in the last two games. Incredible overall numbers. The stat that I wanted to mention that I saw on Sunday is Taysom Hill is the first player since Frank Gifford, who played from 1952 to 1964, that was able to surpass 10 plus passing, rushing, and receiving touchdowns throughout a career. That is ridiculous. Taysom Hill, in the last 25 regular season games he has played, he has scored 16 touchdowns. Obviously, there's a lot of upside in this overall scenario. Therefore, we fire him up once again. Moving on to our number seven, we have George Kittle. George Kittle, in the three games in which we saw without you know, Brandon Ayuk or Debo Samuel in the lineup, he was used at a major capacity, averaging 14.13 half PPR fantasy points per game. That is the George Kittle we love. But unfortunately, in the games in which we have a full healthy offense, Trent Williams is there, Brandon Ayuk is there, Debo Samuel is there. Unfortunately, George Kittle is only averaging 7.22 fantasy points per game, pretty much half of the overall production. Therefore, my expectation going into this week with a healthy Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, Trent Williams returning off of the bye week is that we may see a little bit lesser of a performance from George Kittle. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case. Again, he's taking on a matchup in which the Jacksonville Jaguars are allowing over 10 fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. So I do expect him to have a solid week, but does he have you know as much touchdown or potential upside as these other guys that are you know ranked in the A tier? I don't think so. Moving on to our number eight, we have Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram's been pretty safe. He's been able to get himself seven plus targets in each of the last seven games he has played, that consistency has been great. And in terms of his overall consistency, thus far this season, he is ranked as tight end 7, 9, 7, 10, 21, 13, 12, and 13 over the course of this entire season. On each individual week, he is always in the conversation of being a top 12 guy. And he will always have the, the range of getting himself like 7 to 8 fantasy points to potentially getting himself 11 to 12. 
If he's always going to be in that conversation, of course, he's always going to be a starting option. Moving on to our number nine, we have Jake Ferguson. The biggest issue that I have with Jake Ferguson going into this week is the fact that they take on the New York Giants. The New York Giants defense could honestly get blown out very quickly if the Dallas Cowboys defense is able to cause a couple turnovers or potentially score a special teams and or defensive touchdown. It really will slow down the Dallas Cowboys offense. We have seen that take place on multiple occasions this season in which this team takes a major league and then they you know pretty much take their foot off the pedal and their overall fantasy prospects don't find as much upside within the given week. That is my biggest concern. Outside of that, Jake Ferguson has scored a touchdown within the red zone each of the last two games. We're hoping that he could potentially find a third game within that overall streak. Moving on to our number 10, we have Cole Komet. He plays tonight, and he should have himself an incredible game. In the last two games with Tyson Bajant, who is going to be starting tonight, he's been able to garner a 27% target share. That's 18 targets, 16 receptions, 134 receiving yards, two receiving touchdowns, and 33.4 fantasy points in the last two games combined. They take on the Carolina Panthers this week. Again, it's not the most advantageous matchup, but as long as we continue to see Cole Komet get a high volume of opportunity within this offense, and especially near the red zone, my expectation is another big week here on Thursday Night Football. Moving on to our number 11, we have Trey McBride. Trey McBride has the return of Kyler Murray to look forward to, and many of us who have gone ahead and rostered Trey McBride, this is the week to fire him up. This is primarily because if you go back to 2022 and look at the overall statistics that Kyler had with his tight ends, tight ends throughout 2022 in the 10 games that Kyler Murray fully played healthy. Titans were averaging 9.56 fantasy points per game and a half PPR, seven and a half targets, five point run receptions, 42.1 receiving yards, and 0.4 receiving touchdowns per game. Overall, four touchdowns in the last 10 games, two tight ends for Kyler Murray. My expectation is a pretty solid week here from Trey McBride, especially if, in fact, Michael Wilson is going to miss. Moving on to our number 12, to begin the C tier, we have Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas has been able to garner, what, five plus targets in each of the last three games. In comparison to guys like TJ Hawkinson or Evan Ingram, obviously it's not to that level, but that's why he's here at the C tier. Logan Thomas is still going to be a valuable option within this offense, especially considering the matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. Most recently, of course, they gave up 13 catches in 122 receiving yards to opposing Baltimore tight ends. Uh, five catches, 83 in a touchdown to Cleveland tight ends. Eight catches for 56 to Arizona Cardinals tight ends. We have seen tight ends dominate against the defense for three consecutive weeks. My expectation is a big performance here with potential touchdown upside for Logan Thomas. Moving on to our number 13 and my number 14, we have Kyle Pitts and Jonu Smith. The chart that you can see on screen is for Jonu Smith in specific. He had 105 yards after the catch on Sunday. What a ridiculous number to be able to accumulate. Nonetheless, both these guys got a similar level of opportunity. Five targets for Kyle Pitts, six targets for Jonu Smith. The expectation is that on any given week, either of these two can be of value and find that touchdown or find the upside in the receiving game. It's just a matter of these guys are probably just going to continue to split the overall opportunities. And as long as that is going to be the case, I have them ranked back to back as my number 13 and 14, both viable options, especially with the upgrade at the quarterback position. Moving on to our number 15, we have Hunter Henry. In the absence of guys like Devontae Parker and Kendrick Bourne was able to finally score himself a touchdown. This is the first time in a while. He had seven targets, four catches, 39 receiving yards, and him and Mike Kosicki both played 86 plus percent of the offensive snaps on Sunday against the Washington Commander. So my expectation going into this week's game against the Indianapolis Colts, a team that has given up a lot of receiving yards to opposing tight ends thus far this season, is that Hunter Henry will absolutely get himself a lot of utilization, especially when we take into account the fact that Hunter Henry had seven targets while Mike Kosicki only had two targets, and they both played over 86 percent of the offensive snaps. My expectation going into this week is that, yes, the Indianapolis Colts can be taken advantage of in terms of, you know, receiving yardage. The Carolina Panthers tight ends combined for eight catches, 94 last week. It's just a matter of can he score a touchdown to be fantasy relevant. Moving on to our number 16, we have David Njoku to close out the tight end conversation. Back-to-back -back games of scoring a receiving touchdown. He's been able to get himself four plus receptions in six of the last seven games. That includes a game earlier this season in which he had DTR as a starting quarterback against the Baltimore Ravens. My expectation with an improvement at the quarterback position is a solid performance out of David Njoku. Touchdown upside not expected, but if in fact he falls into the end zone, I'm sure we're all not going to complain in that overall scenario. All right, let's move on to the quarterback conversation. Let's begin by talking about matchups first and foremost. As you guys can see to the right side of the screen, we have quarterback passing statistics isolated. That's passing yards, passing touchdowns, passing interceptions. That's four points per passing touchdown, minus two per interception. Therefore, we find the Philadelphia Eagles are the most advantageous matchup going into the week. But as we all know, the Kansas City Chiefs, Philadelphia Eagles, Miami Dolphins, and Los Angeles Rams are all on bye week. So we're missing a lot of potential quarterback upside 
with Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, Tua Tagovailoa, and sometimes this season, Matthew Stafford. Therefore, going into this week, we won't be able to take advantage of the Philadelphia Eagles matchup, but the Washington Commanders, the Chicago Bears, the Los Angeles Chargers, Denver Broncos, all defenses that have played extremely poorly against our quarterbacks thus far this season, so we want to take advantage of those overall matchups. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the Baltimore Ravens, Cleveland Browns, Two teams that have played extremely well against opposing quarterbacks. Again, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson can both be, you know, fine starters this week. The expectation is whether or not they'll be able to have, you know, potential rushing upside if, in fact, the passing game does fall apart for them. The Cleveland Browns have only allowed 1,300 passing yards. No other team is even remotely close besides the New York Jets, which, again, they'll probably be locking down Aiden O'Connell for majority of this week. Either way, I'll refer back to these statistics over the course of today's episode. Just wanted to go ahead and present a little bit of context going into this week. So let's go ahead and let's start with my number one at the quarterback position. We have Josh Allen. Josh Allen is coming off a pretty decent performance, primarily because of the fact that he had eight rushing attempts, 44 rushing yards, and a rushing touchdown. He led the Buffalo Bills in rushing attempts, yards, and touchdowns last week. 24.72 fantasy points. We'll take it. He's been able to score a rushing touchdown in six of the last seven games he has played. We love to see it. And like I mentioned yesterday in regards to Gabe Davis, Josh Allen at home is a completely different quarterback than he is on the road. Thus far this season, in the games in which he has played at home, he has an 8% better passing completion percentage. He throws for 55 more passing yards, throws for 1.35 more passing touchdowns, and throws for one less interception per game. The overall distribution of production that we have seen on the road in comparison to home has been ridiculous for Josh Allen. Luckily, this week against the Denver Broncos, one of the most advantageous matchups they play on Monday night and at home. That bodes very well for Josh Allen's overall potential this week. Moving on to our number two, we have Joe Burrow. Now, I know that there's a lot of questions regarding Jamar Chase and T. Higgins' overall health. I am expecting them both to play come Sunday. I know that uh, T. Higgins had a limited participation of practice on Wednesday. Hopefully, he's trending in the right direction. I haven't seen the practice report, or it hasn't even come out as of today, uh, as I'm recording this video for the Cincinnati Bengals in regards to T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. So I don't know if they even practiced on Thursday. Time will tell. So if, in fact, both Jamar Chase and T. Higgins suit up, even better. Because Joe Burrow has been able to get himself a base minimum of two passing touchdowns each of the last four games he has played. He's even been able to get you know tight ends involved within the offense. You know, guys like Herb Smith Jr. scoring a touchdown, that is ridiculous. All while in the last two games, Joe Mixon has scored a rushing touchdown in each of those two games. Fantastic. This offense is humming. They're taking on a defense that just gave up 37 points to the Buccaneers offense. My expectation is a big week here from Joe Burrow. Again, he's looking like MVP Joe Burrow. Now that he's healthy, he's really dicing up teams. Moving on to our number three, we have Lamar Jackson. I am worried. Yes, 100% I am worried. Primarily because Lamar Jackson's coming off a performance in which he had an 81% passing completion percentage, scored zero touchdowns, and the Baltimore Ravens won by over 30 points. That is my biggest concern. He can have games like that. But luckily, the last time we saw him take on the Cleveland Browns defense, he had 186 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, 27 rushing yards, and two rushing touchdowns, 28.14 fantasy points. But unfortunately, even though he was able to have himself a great performance, most recently, we have seen that the rushing touchdowns haven't gone in his direction. The passing touchdowns haven't been able to accumulate every single week at a high capacity. In the last three games, Baltimore Ravens running backs have scored seven rushing touchdowns, six in the direction of Gus Edwards, and one in the direction most recently for Keaton Mitchell. That is my biggest concern. Now, outside of that, I mean, Lamar Jackson's playing extremely well. Thus far this season, seven of the nine games he has played, he's been able to surpass a 70% passing completion percentage. Even against a tough elite defense, he's comfortable enough in the pocket to dice up this team. Moving on to our number four, we have Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott's played extremely well as of late. In the last three games, he's been able to put up a base minimum of two touchdowns per game. He's been able to score over 24 fantasy points per game in the last three contests. My biggest concern is the fact that they take on the New York Giants. My hope is that this offense puts up 30 points on them and the defense doesn't score a single touchdown. Hopefully, all they do is force turnovers and allow Dak Prescott to dice up this defense, which he's absolutely capable of doing. In the last couple weeks, in the last three games, he has accumulated 17 rushing attempts. As long as he gets himself more utilization, of course, on the ground, playing as well as he has through the air, this is an offense that is in a really fantastic position going into week 10. Moving on to our number five, we have Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert was quite underwhelming on Monday Night Football, primarily because he took on the New York Jets you know, defense. The New York Jets have really stopped opposing quarterbacks all season long. Jo you know, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, 
Justin Herbert, another one of these quarterbacks that have struggled against that defense. We have learned our lesson. No longer are we starting our stud quarterbacks against that defense. Nonetheless, going into this week, he takes on the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are really great at stopping the run. And that is absolutely going to force Justin Herbert to turn that defense into a passing funnel. And even though that defense in that secondary has played well this season, the expectation is that Justin Herbert should be throwing the ball 40 plus times this week. If in fact there ends up being an underdog play in which he has, you know, 38 and a half passing attempts. I don't even know if that number exists, but if it's, I'm, I'm going to assume it's going to be something of that exchange. If it is, I'm taking the higher going into this week. He'll be throwing for majority of the game and of course, finding success. Moving on to our number six to begin the beats here. Speaking of the Detroit Lions, we have Jared Goff taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are the fourth best matchup at the position. They're allowing 17.04 fantasy points per game in terms of passing statistics isolated. The last three games we have seen Jared Goff accumulate 270 passing yards in each of the three contests. And now going into this week, coming off of the bye week, the offensive line is finally healthy. On top of that, he gets David Montgomery back and the new addition of Donovan Peoples-Jones, who they traded for just a couple weeks back. And we haven't seen him, you know, introduced within this offense because they were on by. My expectation is a big week here in a shootout against the Los Angeles Chargers. On number seven for this week, we have CJ Stroud. Listen, I had him as a hidden gem last week, but I didn't expect 470 passing yards and five passing touchdowns in any sort of capacity. That is absolutely a legendary performance. And I don't think we'll see anything close to that for the remainder of the season. But at this current moment in time, taking on the Cincinnati Bengals in a game in which they may be in a negative game script, as long as the Houston Texans, you know, maintain this pass heavy offense, this pass happy offense. I mean, how could we sit CJ Stroud when he has so much potential and he's demonstrated, you know, I mean, a 72% passing completion percentage against the Buccaneers tearing apart that defense. I'm expecting another big game here for him going into week 10. Moving on to our number five. We have Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy's coming off of the bye weekend. The main context I want to give in regards to Brock Purdy is prior to the injuries of, you know, Debo Samuel, Trent Williams, he was averaging 19.85 fantasy points per game. After the injuries from weeks 16 through 18, he was only averaging 12.93 fantasy points per game. There's a huge swing there. This upcoming week, they take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like we mentioned over the course of this week, it is one of the easiest wide receiver matchups within the week and it is a top 11 matchup at the quarterback position. They're allowing 13.75 fantasy points per game in terms of passing statistics isolated. My expectation is a lot of upside for Brock Purdy. Hopefully, you know, Christian McCaffrey doesn't score too many rushing touchdowns to take away that overall value. Moving on to our number nine, we have Trevor Lawrence. Speaking of running backs taking away overall value, in the last four games, we have seen Travis Etienne score, what, seven rushing touchdowns? That absolutely has affected the overall upside of Trevor Lawrence. But this offense is playing well. This is a 6-2 and two football team that continues to string together victories. Going up against the San Francisco 49ers defense, who most recently, in the last two games prior to their bye week, gave up 280 passing yards and three passing touchdowns to Joe Burrow. 300 and, nearly 380 passing yards and two passing touchdowns to Kirk Cousins. My expectation is a big week here, and hopefully... Trevor Lawrence can get Zay Jones back and potentially incorporate him within the offense with Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne to have himself a dominant performance, hopefully a shootout between these two teams. Moving on to our number 10, we have Sam Howell, the angry bird himself. Sam Howell has been unbelievable this season. Coming off another great performance, over 300 passing yards, a passing touchdown, 17.7 fantasy points in seven of the last nine games he has played thus far this season. He's been able to rank as the number three 13 or better quarterback within those given weeks. Now to take that stat even further, in five of the last six games, he's been able to be a top 12 quarterback for fantasy purposes. My expectation is another big performance here against the Seattle Seahawks. We just saw the Baltimore Ravens buzz saw that defense. You can absolutely expect, you know, Sam Howell, who has consistently played well every single week for fantasy purposes, whether it's on the ground or through the air, to have himself another great week here for the Washington Commanders offense. Moving on to our number 11, we have Derek Carr. Derek Carr, another one of these consistent quarterbacks that, again, is only getting better. Had a 74% passing completion percentage last week, two passing touchdowns. That's five consecutive games in which he has been a top 15 ranked quarterback for fantasy purposes. The last three games, the Minnesota Vikings have allowed a base minimum of 225 passing yards and one passing touchdown to each of the last three quarterbacks that they have played against. My expectation, with the Saints having so many weapons, Taysom Hill obviously getting himself into the overall conversation, catching touchdowns. Juwan Johnson now kind of back from his injury, ready to go. 
This is an offense that is firing on all cylinders. The Minnesota Vikings will have their hands full. And Derek Carr should have himself another consistent week of potentially 15-plus fantasy points. Moving on to our number 12, we have Geno Smith. Geno Smith had himself a New York Jets performance. Last week's performance against the Baltimore Ravens did not remind me of anything that I saw in 2022 out of Geno Smith. The comeback player of the year wasn't there. And that is quite unfortunate, but this week has an opportunity of bouncing back. The second best matchup at the position taking on the Washington Commanders. With all the weapons that he has to his disposal and the fact that the Washington Commanders cannot stop the pass, my expectation is that Geno Smith will be able to air it out to DK Lockett and JSM, and they're all going to have their own respective success, and Geno Smith will benefit off that. Moving on, we have our number 13, Josh Dobbs. Joshua Dobbs, considering the fact that he didn't know any of the plays that were being called into his helmet, from Kevin O'Connell, and he was able to still function within that offense is absolutely ridiculous. Not only did he function within the offense, he pulled out a victory, scored 24.92 fantasy points, 66 rushing yards, a rushing touchdown. If the mobility is going to continue to be in the conversation, I think absolutely should be in this top 15 conversation going into this week. If, in fact, Justin Jefferson plays this week, I think top 12 upside for this upcoming week, taking on the New Orleans Saints defense, is absolutely expected. I'm expecting Joshua Dobbs, now that he has learned the offense, has a full week of practice, you know, primarily with the first team offense, knows everybody's names, should be in a fantastic spot. Now, the player that is taking over for Josh Dobbs in Arizona, Kyler Murray comes in at number 14. Kyler Murray is returning from the ACL injury, and we all know how productive he has been throughout his entire career. I mean, when he is healthy, he has been a top six quarterback every single season. I mean, going back to his sophomore campaign in the National Football League. So my expectation, taking on the seventh best matchup at the quarterback position, allowing over 15 fantasy points per game. The Atlanta Falcons, they should be giving up a, you know, a fair share of yardage and, of course, points to Kyler Murray. I mean, Josh Dobbs last week, without knowing a single player within the offense, was able to throttle that defense for the entirety of the game. If, in fact, Kyler Murray can be highly mobile and he can get himself rushing utilization and potentially get some you know rushing touchdown upside down near the red zone, top 12 potential is on the horizon. Outside of that, a pretty solid play as our number 14. To close out the C tier, another one of these players that very easily can get themselves into the top 12 conversation is Baker Mayfield because he's been able to consistently do that over the last couple weeks. In the last three games, he has been a top 13 quarterback in all three of those overall matchups. Takes on the Tennessee Titans this week, an advantageous matchup in itself. When Baker Mayfield can find fantasy success with guys outside of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, he can find Rashad White and, of course, Kay Dotton. That gives me a lot of hope that going into the matchup and going forward, he can consistently be a producing quarterback for fantasy purposes. The final quarterback I wanted to mention is Russell Wilson taking on the Buffalo Bills defense Monday night in Buffalo. Coming off of the bye week, they'll have prepared for the matchup. And my expectation taking on a secondary that has struggled and a defense that has struggled more than they ever have in the last you know three, four seasons. Considering the injuries that were sustained by Matt Milano and Tredavious White, those are big difference makers within that defense. I'm expecting Russell Wilson, who has played relatively consistently over the course of the season, to have himself a solid week in the negative game script. All right, that's going to cover for me today in terms of quarterback and tight end rankings. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I'm going to go ahead and close out today's video by putting together a couple pick em subs via Underdog Fantasy. Again, be sure to use code Andrew. Make that first-time deposit minimum of $10 to not only take advantage of the Bryce Young 0.5 total yards, get that first-time deposit match, but also get my rankings every single Sunday for the remainder of the season. Let's check that out right now. So just a little bit of accountability. As of late, we have been better than we've been worse. I mean, in terms of last Thursday's overall play, fantastic. Last Saturday's play, went well. The other Saturday play went well. The only thing was that this play, the Hidden Gems play of the week in which I put this together on the Hidden Gems episode last week, Adam Thielen was quite disappointing. Receiving yards were able to kind of hook us in that overall scenario. Was unfortunate, but three out of the four, not bad. If you took insurance on that, would have gotten your money back in regards to Underdog Fantasy. Another player that, oh, actually, you know what? I had myself my own little play this week. Uh, there was an underdog, as you can see, flash sale. It happens every now and then where like a random timer will pop up. I went ahead and put that together. You know, won, you know, won a couple bones there, no big deal. And then the Monday play, unfortunately, another one of these scenarios where receiving yards hooked us. So we're going to be very careful with receiving yards tonight. And let's go ahead and put together a pick em slip right now. Unless you're a new customer and you can take advantage of the 0.5 total yards from Bryce Young, the play that I primarily like with Bryce Young is going higher than 32 and a half passing attempts, primarily because like I've mentioned over the course of this entire week, 
The Chicago Bears run stop defense has been absolutely incredible over the course of weeks five through nine. They're only allowing what, like 2.6 yards per carry on average. They've yet to give up a rushing touchdown in the last month of the season. They've been a dominant force and they only just added, uh, you know, got like sweat to the defensive line from the Washington Commanders via that trade. As of late, we have seen Bryce Young get himself 39, 31, 38, 41 passing attempts. Again, a lot of negative game scripts, and the only game in which he had 31 passing attempts was a game in which they won against the Houston Texans. I don't expect the Carolina Panthers to win. I'm expecting, you know, the upside of 33-plus passing attempts from Bryce Young within the given night. Now, when I scroll down and I look at Adam Thielen, you know, I Adam Thielen really did hurt us the other day. And I, I do want to be careful with Adam Thielen because, again, he did end up burning me a little bit. But I do forgive Adam Thielen. I'm going into tonight's game with a clean slate. And I'm going to approach under the mentality that Adam Thielen can get the job done. Six and a half receptions. He was able to accomplish that in the five prior games, you know, before week nine. He was able to accomplish over 66 and a half receiving yards in majority of those contests. My expectation, I don't want to get hooked by receiving yards. I'll take the reception total. I'm expecting a lot of overall passing attempts from Bryce Young. Hopefully, you know, 25% of them can go in the direction of Adam Thielen as it typically has over the course of the season. Now, to go ahead and finish off today's, you know, pick em slip, I need to include a player from another team. Therefore, we'll go over to the conversation of the Chicago Bears. Khalil Herbert and Justin Fields are not active tonight. Therefore, Deontay Foreman, DJ Moore, both of them having revenge games. Deontay Foreman has been given a lot of rushing opportunity as of late and going up against his former team, and the most advantageous matchup at the running back position, 62 and a half rushing yards is an automatic that is going to be the one that I'd like to go with. Now, another player that I really do like, and the reason why I have him so highly ranked, is Cole Komet. 35 and a half receiving yards. I don't want to get hooked by receiving yards. I truly don't. But in this overall circumstance, I would say the three plays that I've overall given, Bryce Young passing attempts, total receptions by Adam Thielen, and rushing yards by Deontay Foreman, go with those three as one overall slip. I'll just go ahead and I'll take the higher on the 35 and a half receiving yards. He's been able to get himself 18 targets, over 134 receiving yards in the last two games. My expectation is that Tyson Bajic continues to look in his direction. These are the four that I like for this week. Be sure to go ahead, use code Andrew if you have not yet already. Thank you everybody for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with Hidden Gems. Enjoy tonight's game. And until next time, guys, I'll see you. Peace.